guys, it's Lindsay here and today I am talking about the sewing plans that I have for January. Um, we are kicking off a whole new year sewing. Um, I hope you watched my sewing resolutions video. You'll see some of the things that I am looking to try and work toward for this year. Um, <laughs> and as I look at my stack of plans, I realize none of these are going to help me achieve any of those goals. I mean, maybe a little bit, maybe with the finishing techniques one, um, that would help me with, but ne none of these are pants. Um, none of these are works in progress, <laughs> but that's okay. Cause it'll still be fun. Um, so I have three projects that I have planned for January. Um, and Gosh, the weather here in Charleston has been all over the place. Um, it's 70 degrees out right now. Like even this toaster sweater that I'm wearing is like too much. Like this is like a really thin sweater knit and it's too much. People are still in shorts and flip flops around here. It's crazy. But then this weekend, it'll be highs in the 50s. Um, so there's like a 20 degree swing either way. I want to say Christmas Day or Boxing Day, it was almost 80 degrees. Like that's just insane. So we haven't had a winter. Like, let's be real. Like we not even close. Um, and nor do I know if we're going to. Like, is this just going to be it? Is this going to be how it is? If so, then I've got plans for some for some garments that I might not never wear unless I travel somewhere. Um, but and and the first one that I have planned is totally that. So I have this really great sweat um, cable knit sweater knit. I got this from Cali Fabrics, um, and it's just a really beautiful cable knit. Um, so very classic kind of cable knit. It's in navy. I just love it. And so um, I don't have a matching rib knit. Like you'll see in a lot of cable knit sweaters, they'll do the neck band and the um, sleeve bands and even the hem bands all in like a coordinating rib knit. And I just don't have that, nor do I have the energy to go out and try and find that. So I thought that the toaster sweater would be great. That's what I'm wearing now. This is by Sew House 7 um, because it doesn't really have a neckline at all. It just has this really cool, like, I don't know, almost like a cowl opening. Um, and this fabric or this pattern calls for a really stable knit. And the, one of the coolest things I think about this cable knit is that it is backed. It's backed with a cotton. So it is not as, I don't know, you might think of cable knit as being like if you were to knit something yourself being really, really slouchy and that's not it. This stabilizes it a lot and gives it like a lot of structure. So I think that this would just be perfect for the neckline of the toaster sweater. Um, the hems of the toaster sweater are really cool too, um, but again require a stable heavy knit um, knit fabric. So that's why I'm going to try it out of this. This is a very lightweight one. So this will be my more heavyweight one and you can really wear it with so many things. I mean, Navy cable knit, come on, it goes with everything. So yeah, so that's going to be project number one. Honestly, the toaster sweater probably takes two hours maybe at the most. It comes together so quickly, especially because I've already cut out the pattern. I've already, you know, made any adjustments that I needed to make and, and this is it. So that's really good. That'll cut out some time too. Okay. So I also have more Navy. This is a Navy and white striped fabric that just feels like butter. I don't remember anything about it. Um, it, I, I think it must be Terry because the back of it looks like Terry weave. Um, I got it from Mood um, in New York City, gosh, a year and a half ago when we went in 2015. That's when I got it. I want to say Abby got some too, but maybe hers was in a different colorway, like a more periwinkle color. But I've been holding on to it because I didn't want to do something so obvious with navy and white stripes, but then I didn't want to do something too wacky with it either. Like I still wanted it to be really traditional. So what I think I've settled on and, and honestly, this was my idea to do with this fabric, um, right when the pattern came out is to do the bowline sweater. So I know that a lot of people have done striped bowline sweaters in the past. Um, and 
let's be real it's just well suited pattern for stripes it just looks really good um so yeah it just it highlights the stripe i think in a way that's interesting um it you know other options would be just to make a plain you know sweater like a like a just a regular striped sweater and i don't really want to do that i want to do something cool and interesting so um so that's what i'm going to do even though it's been done it's not that original i'm still going to do it and i'm going to love it i'm sure it's going to be great um it is a lighter terry so i'll be able to wear it in our winter um and um through spring and uh late fall probably i'll be able to wear it next year um or at the end of this year golly 2017 um so yeah so that's plan number two and then the third plan comes courtesy of art gallery fabrics they sent me this beautiful fabric from or it's actually a wall a, a voile why say wall where'd that come from voile from katrina rochella from her blythe collection so it's really really pretty it has this gray background and these little birds that are in like pink and there's like some blues and um yeah it's just a really really pretty print there's also these really cool owls on it so i think that's really fun and what i want to make with this is some kind of woven top i mean obviously it's a oil it's woven but i am torn between doing like i don't want to do a long sleeve button up i think that that would be too much but if i did like a short sleeve button up maybe with like a puffy ish sleeve and then everything else like a traditional button up or doing a peplum top or doing um one of the tunic bible ruffle applications i really like that one that has the dramatic ruffle that comes all the way up and around and down um it has like a real big ruffle on it um i think i've worn one of the versions one of the ones like that in a video um before and got compliments on it so um i'm torn between those three things so y'all let me know what y'all think i should make should we do like a like a poll and whatever gets the most votes is what i have to make no matter what <laughs> i don't know i love y'all and i trust y'all y'all have like lots of really good suggestions and ideas all the time um i just don't know if i can give up complete control like that i'm a bit of a control freak and i think i need to maintain <laughs> some level of control over my projects but Either way, sound off in the comments. Let me know what your opinion is and which one you want me to make. And I will take them all into consideration and then still make the one that I want to make. <laughs> How does that sound? Sounds like a deal to me. Anyways, so these are my plans for January. Let me know what you're planning on making. I'm sure it's much colder in other areas of the country and of the world. And y'all are able to make just tons of really cool wintery stuff. Um, this is not that video. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you were looking for winter projects, this is not it just because it's just not suited for that here. But um, let me know what you're making. I still want to know. I'm sure there's lots of really cool coats being made out there in the world. I'd love to know what all you all have going on. So that's it for me for this time. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye.